Hello and welcome to a beer with Raggy. So, chuck the odd one in now and again. And uh, let's talk cask beer. And uh, I just did, I've just done a review and it brought me onto that, you know, brought me onto it with cask beer. Uh, someone told me the UK is the only country in the world that actually does cask. I'm not 100% sure about that. Uh, I, like most people, are still learning about cask, keg, and and whatnot and uh, you know I came into beer reviews not as somebody super knowledgeable about beers as somebody who worked in the beer trade albeit at a supermarket for five years and uh, is learning on the job as it were and uh, let's talk cask cask uh, recently on the channel a devotion of mine is to at the weekend to going out to pubs not many pubs to be honest someone said someone i think it was mark actually mark jones said you're always at the pub no i'm not um i literally either go once or twice on a good week to the pub and it literally it's for like three or four hours oh someone always he's twat on about a little fucking scooter <clears throat> Pardon me. That's the real raggy coming out of the box there. I do apologise. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> little fucker. But anyway, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is why nobody invites me on to their breweries. <laughs> but anyway. Um, I don't care. It is what it is. Like me or not like me. <laughs> yeah, you can't change people, can you? I am actually a really nice person, but there you go. Um, but anyway, yeah, for, for a while now, and certainly since before Christmas and certainly after Christmas, um, I've been getting braver to do beer reviews at a pub. Um, while the women are talking and that, just to, and the focus is now one minute cask beer reviews. Why? Cask beer is, the, is at this absolute forefront of the industry at the moment. It always has been out. Actually, uh, most of go most beers go into casks. Certainly from mod tradition, modern traditional breweries, and a lot of craft breweries these days. You know, there's a lot more goes into casks than you think. And uh, for me, there's pubs around the Nottingham area, and and Loke, Derbyshire, Leicestershire. You know, Lincolnshire. that are having these cask and uh, that's a homebrew by the way bonfire toffee style it's got a woody taste to it woody it's woody um but yeah and so talking about cask now i've had cask raggy's golden ale now on cask that was some beer. I reckon it had a bit of ragged touch to it, you know what I mean? Uh, the raggy's gold nail that went into the bottles wasn't actually my. Uh, it was rebrewed, so um, it wasn't. It didn't have the raggy touch on there, you know what I mean? But um, cask is so so important. Because you're getting straight into the pubs, it's going out. You know, the the it, there's a brewing, there's a casking, and to the pub, let them sell it. And uh, bish bash bosh, it's gone. Obviously, with cans and bottles, there's a lot more labour involved. Um, I would still, I, I still hope that more my local breweries at least get their backsides into gear and put more stuff into you know even even the, the the cask releases into cans and bottles um even if it's only just flipping local you know on their websites you get, um it does exasperate me at times when i see so many great releases the only brewery the only brewery uh locally that really does put an effort to put stuff both into cask and into bot into bottle or can 
is Lenton Lane Brewery. They they are on the ball. Um, and the rest of them are lacking. Um, and there's been some good beers that have come out on cask from a lot of good brewers and keg. You know, we'll bring keg into the equation. There's a lot of good beers that just don't make it into bloody cans or bottles. Neon Raptor are actually quite high on the list of, st of breweries that put stuff that's in keg, but also in can. I can only talk about local here because, like most people, I go to local pubs and I see what comes out local. Uh, good to see that Neon Raptor are going more down the cask route. Uh, the only thing for them, I suppose, like a lot of these craft beer breweries, is um, you've got to watch what you put your price at. Um, price too high, you price yourself out of the market, even with a good name. And I know this because I've spoke to uh, people in the pub trade and they are looking at brands... A little shit on that scooter. Um, they're looking at brands, and and you know, as a beer reviewer, I say to them, "You want to try this brand? You know, this web, this beer brewery, that brewery." And they're like, oh, "You see, what they're charging this much per barrel, and they're charging this much, and and they're the same ABV." And it's like, "Oh, okay, I can't argue the case there." Two of the breweries, two good breweries, craft the craft beer breweries in cask, and uh, I know both of them. I will not tell you the name of these breweries, and it's 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 interesting. Um, they're not special barrel age releases; they're just like your standard stuff, and the prices are, are somewhat more. And uh, yes, I mean, it, I know it's difficult and it's difficult with hot costs and overheads and all that. Prices are going up, we all know that. Uh, pubs that can keep their prices low and breweries that can keep their prices low. For the moment, uh, it's all interesting, you know. We've all got to feed the, you know, uh, pay bills and whatnot. Um, but it's interesting that the, the, uh, the cost and that but you know, cask, um, we've got a group of friends, they're called the Happy Drinkers, and uh, it's our little group. And there, there are, um, click, what's the word, other members as well. So there's quite a few of us, to be fair. Um, but a base amount of five people. Um, now and again there may be more but uh and it's great for me because I, i'm going over to predominantly beeston uh in nottingham to some amazing cask beer pubs the star in uh 10 you anything up to 10 different casks albeit marston's might be on quite regular because it's a tied pub um <clears throat> Marston's is okay, you know, I, when I first came into beer reviewing, you know, I, I came in through supermarket beers, and so, I, you know, I didn't, I didn't come in through the craft beer scene with my nose at Elder Pie, however, uh, I have noticed that Marston's, you know, and certain breweries across the country, you know, uh, swallow up little breweries and do the dirty on them, and uh, I've seen that in Nottingham. Uh, done to O'Mails, Shipstons, Hardy and Anson's, and uh, you know a Mansfield Mansfield Brewery. So we've seen the dirty what these big breweries do, and uh, you know we're not bloody impressed. Um, but the the ever changing range of craft beer, uh, cask beers, and keg beers from the pubs that I also go to, uh, it's I, you know. It's amazing to see stuff, and uh, if if there's anybody who, who, who's thinking of going into the beer trade, you know, and 
having a core lineup is one thing. It is. It, it's definitely one thing. Um, and it depends on where you where where you're based and all that. There are, you know, if it's if it's if it's say it's Lincoln Green Brewery, they've got four core beers that are on all the time. People, gen generally older people, will go in for those beers all the time because it's like drinking an old mate. In a, in a way, anyway. But a lot of people these days go in because there's new beers on the bar and something new to try. And that's where I come into play because uh, I want to be trying new stuff as much as I can. I don't ever want... I don't ever want to be going into the pub the week after and the same fucking 10 beers are on. I'm like, oh no. And I'm sat there thinking, well, there's not one single beer that I even want to try. And then I'm looking at the ciders and I'm thinking, sod the beers. <laughs> <laughs> but the world of cask, there's a, there are, I feel that there's a, there is a, there's a, a certain resurgence. Um... 2020 killed the cask beer scene. It did. It absolutely put the nail in the coffin for, for COVID did. All breweries that wanted to survive had to go into bottle or can predominantly. Let's keep going. Uh, some were lucky to do cask and sell it as... Um, you know, draft beer and, uh, you know, in milk bottles and stuff, uh, milk jugs and shit. And, uh, you know, that was another great way of doing it. And, and again, this is a trick where breweries, all pubs, all breweries need to get on this bandwagon of selling stuff in, re in, in containers. You know, pints by the container. And uh, maybe a bit cheaper if not drinking on premises. I don't know. Um... You know, if there's a, a thing VAT wise where, you know, on the tills you can say it wasn't drank on premises, you know, lower the lower the uh, rate. I don't know if that's a thing. I know you can, I know it is with cans because um, shops put a bit on for cans, don't they? But whether it's the same for others, I'm not sure, you know. But in any case, uh, this beer with Raggy, talking about cask. It's great to see the resurgence. Like everybody, I do like to see more in bottle and can. But it's great to see these beers coming out in cask and keg. Even big 11% Imperials. I know a local brewery next near me called Urban Chicken Ale. He put his cask, cask, of his 11% Imperial Coffee Stout. It bloody one of the first beers to sell out. You would think the pale ale would sell out. It was the Imperial that sold out uh, in a pub on a tap takeover. What does that tell you? Hey, you know Imperials last longer anyway. Not when people are drinking, and uh, it's amazing. You know, let's celebrate cask. My channel is is moving more to, not moving all the way, no, but certainly supporting cask. A good. I would say a good 40% to 50% of the time now, going forward even, um, you know, celebrating cast beer, doing cast beer reviews, um, as, as other things, you know. But uh, yeah, cheers for watching. See you soon. Have a good beer. Cheers.